Welcome to our uh, Family Service Certification Info Session. As you've noticed, we are going to record this session. So if you need to step away for any reason, you will get access to the recording afterwards. Um, we can also make our slides available to you. Those will go out in our follow up email. So be on the lookout for those. Um, it's my pleasure today to introduce you to our speaker and also our reviewer for our family service certification. This is Sarah Laney. Sarah uh, is part of a Head Start Early Head Start program in sunny Florida. Uh, she holds a bachelor's in sociology and a master's in educational leadership from Grand Canyon University. And she has vast amounts of experience coaching staff using the PFCE framework and navigating our uh, family partnership process. Sarah's also earned NHSA's family service credential. And so she's eager to help others through the process. She knows it as well as anybody. We are thrilled to have her on that team um, and to share with you all today how that process works so you can set your staff up for success. Uh, my name is Rachel Hutchison. I'm the course manager for the family service certification. So um, I help Sarah with all the logistics for this course and we're constantly looking for ways to make it better. So um, your feedback is always appreciated. And I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Sarah. Good afternoon from sunny Florida. It is 4.03 in the afternoon. It is 76 degrees and it's beautiful weather. I've got my palm trees behind me and I love seeing where all of you are from. Um, I'm seeing Alaska and South Dakota and Virginia. Uh, we are an amazing, amazing program that serve, that services children from all over the country. So I'm so glad you're here. So you're here because you're either a supervisor or a manager or have some part in family services that is probably wondering, okay, I've got this performance standard I need to meet and I've got new staff or veteran staff, and I need to know what is going on. So I'm going to see if I can answer your questions through my presentation, and hopefully I will get you out of here early so you can continue your day. Thank you, Rachel, for the great um, welcome. You can just add questions in the chat as we go along, and I have moderators, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and first, we're going to launch a poll. I would like to know um, how long you've been in your position. The poll is going to pop up on your screen, and all you have to do is answer the question. How long have you been in your position? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right, so we got a lot of veterans on here that is going to serve you very well when if you decide to do the credential. We've got some newbies, we've got some middle of the road. So having some experience in the family services position is going to be very, very helpful. And I'm speaking mostly right now to supervisors and managers who are trying to determine at what point you get your employee ready to take this family services certification. Um, I'm gonna start the PowerPoint and hopefully some of your questions will be answered and we'll answer them at the end, okay? I see Peggy Kemp, if you can hear me, thumbs up. Awesome, okay, let's go ahead and start. I also am gonna have Spanish translation at the bottom of my screen. If you need anything, please, um, you're welcome to interrupt me. Raul, this is so cute. Welcome to the Academy, which is Head Start's official home for professional learning. Let's keep going here. We took a poll. I see there's a lot of veterans here. Um, I strongly urge that if you're new to your position, um, you wait until about the sixth or seventh or eighth month mark to take this credential. The many questions that are being asked 
um, are going to be based on your program's policies and procedures, okay? But let's talk a little bit about the mission of NHSA. Okay, so it's to coalesce and inspire and support the Head Start field as a leader in early childhood development and education. So through the academy, we are able to offer um, these different courses for family services, for health services. So we have a great mission, okay? And we are powerful and we're united. And in the end, our outcome when we um, go through these credentials is that the, the most important outcome is that the children and families in our program are empowered and healthy and strong. And that's from all of us, right? So the performance standard that talks about the requirement for the family services credential is 1302.91. And I'm just gonna go ahead and read it, okay? Family services staff who work directly with families on the family partnership process at a minimum, a credential or certification in social work, human services, family services, counseling or a related field within 18 months of hire. It's only applicable to staff hired after November 7, 2016. So if you have staff who are hired before 2016, they can be grandfathered in. However, I always encourage this certification because it helps you become so much more knowledgeable about your program's policies and procedures, okay? You do not have to be new to Head Start to take this credential, but it is helpful for you to have some knowledge, okay? So some people wonder what is family services and um, why is it important for us to take this certification? Well, we assist the families, right? Um, we help them in so many things, their needs, their goals, their concerns, linking them with the community. And helping them and supporting and empowering our families takes on many different forms, depending on where you live, the demographics, what are the structures set in your community. But the overall goal is to help our parents enhance their skills, okay? So on the bottom of the slide, a big part of family services are the needs assessments, the family goals, linking our families with community resources, program governance, um, and ERSI. So this course is talking about all of those domains on the bottom of this slide, specifically how your program supports those, okay? So let's get into the nitty gritty. So you're signed up for this course through the NHSA. Well, how do you prepare? The very, very first thing is this is all based on your own program. The first couple questions is about the mission and vision and the history of Head Start, but all the other questions is about your own program, agencies, policies, and procedures. And many of the questions um, have has a self-reflect on the Head Start performance standards, okay? Um, those are electronic or they're a blue book that you have laying around your office. Make sure you have the most up-to-date one and you want to make sure that your policies and procedures for your program align with the performance standards, okay? So once you get signed up and you get notification about your orientation, which is office hours with myself or the other reviewer, Danita, you have four months to get it done, okay? It's all online, it's on Canvas, and it's 12 domains or 12 topics, but inside those 12 topics or competencies are dozens of activities, questions that need to be answered in the narrative, okay? Like an essay form, like a good meaty two paragraphs um, enough for us to really get the concept of um, what's happening in your program and answering the question thoroughly. 
So you're not gonna be able to do this by yourself. You're gonna sign up, you're gonna get to the first couple questions and wonder, I have no idea what they're asking. You're gonna need to have a mentor or somebody on your team and management or a peer to work with you, help you find those policies and procedures, talk about how they're implemented in your program. You might need to ask your admin or your ERSI team or your health team. You use your village. So for example, I am under the grantee of a school district. Um, and so uh, a lot of our policies with child abuse, domestic violence, health, staff health and wellness are all under school district policies and procedures that we align ourselves with. So it's gonna familiarize yourself with your program and your grantee, okay? I'm going to stop right there. Are there any questions so far? All right, I'm gonna keep moving. I'll take that as a plus that we're being thorough. All right. So a lot of people get nervous. What does this entail? Is it question and answer or is it a test? There is no multiple choice. There is no test. It is a portfolio where you get a whole bunch of questions, about 70 to 74, and then you need to answer them in a narrative. Um, in your voice and your story and in your own words. And it's really important that you submit your own work, okay? Copying and pasting from ECLEC or from Google um, is not encouraged. Um, and you can always tell when I'm grading, um, when someone copies and pastes, because we don't typically speak like the written word in Google or in policies and procedures, okay? So it's really important that as you start to type out your response, that it's gonna be based on your own experience and your own program. And again, we wanna reiterate that we're focusing on your program. How does your program apply the standards? Okay. So a program um, determines who's gonna take the credential. They get the sign-on credentials from our team at NHSA. They get familiar with the platform, which is Canvas. They get introduced to the first module. They can then answer a few questions. And then the supervisor must review and sign off. So it is really important for any supervisors or managers on here to really support your team member who is taking this credential because they can't do it alone. They need the support of their management and supervisor to help them answer the questions. There are questions on self-assessment, program planning, implementing policies and procedures. Um, and some of those things, the family services staff is not as involved in. So, here is a sample question. Choose one of the family partnership Head Start performance standards. Describe how you accomplish this in your work and please cite the performance standard. So with that first question, you'll wanna look in the performance standard and find one of the family partnership um, standards. Think about it, think about how you implement it in your work and you're just gonna describe it. And then you're going to share which performance standard is that you that you chose to explain. Okay. And there's always support with this credential. You can email me or Danita through Canvas. You can join our office hours, which are the first and third Mondays of the month at five o'clock Eastern to six o'clock Eastern via Zoom. The, the only office hour that's mandatory is the very first one. Uh, that is when you first get started. The other ones are optional, but I have a lot of learners um, that say that the office hours are very, very helpful, okay? If you've got some tech questions or not quite sure what's happening with Canvas, you can email the help desk. 
So with that, I am just going to stop right there and, and just do a pause and just let it soak in for a minute, okay? So I see a question from Ms. Courtney. Is the credential good for life or do you need to renew it? You do not need to renew it every year, but the NHSA is currently coming up with a renewal process that will be about every three to five years. It hasn't been um, pushed out yet, but at some point you will have to renew, but it definitely won't be yearly. There were a few more questions in the chat. Sarah, do you wanna grab those now? I can't see them. Well, I've got them. Thank you. So there's, um, first question is, there's a staff member who's asking if this is for managers and supervisory staff only. So this credential is for anyone that is family services, Head Start staff. So um, teachers typically don't take this because they're licensed or they have their CDA. But any staff that really wants to do a deep dive into their policies and procedures, I definitely encourage to take it, okay? Um, so if you have a family and community engagement um, coordinator or supervisor or an ERSI coordinator or supervisor, um, it can always benefit anyone, for sure. And sort of a follow-on question for that, is this signed up for at the by the agency or is it for individuals? So your agency is going to determine um, if you need to take it based on your education credentials and it is paid for through your agency. And then uh, will all family service workers be required to get the credential with a college degree? So that depends on your program, okay? If you look at the performance standard, it is, if, is you're required to take it if you do not meet certain education criteria, which is coursework and human services, social work counseling, and that is depending on what your agency deems appropriate. There's a question about how to enroll. Sure. So how you enroll is, um, it depends on how your agency enrolls you in trainings or extra professional development, okay? For my program, I let my secretary know and she enrolls my staff and pays for it. Um, so that is typically what happens. And from the NHSA side, we did just drop the link to the certification in the chat. And that is the page where you would go in order to do the enrollment. So whoever it is at your program that does that process, um, that link in the, the chat is what you use to enroll in the course. Next question is when do the courses run? Very good question. Yes, they start monthly. So if you sign up now, then most likely you would get login credentials to join the first office hours in the first week in March. Um, so that's a great question because when you're determining when you wanna take it, you need to just think about what's happening in your life. <laughs> so for example, many staff members do not sign up for it. I do not encourage them to sign up for it until about April or May. And I know that they're not working in the summer. So they have that time through the summer to take it, the, the course. Or if September and October is a slower time, then you got to just consider the four months after you start so that um, you can have enough time and meet that performance standard before your 18 months condition of employment is, is up. They're coming in fast and furious now, Sarah. No problem. So uh, we've got a question about um, the cost of the certification. Um, sure. our, and I can answer that one. Okay. Our NHSA member rate, if your program is a member of NHSA, the cost is $1,195. The majority of you should be in a member organization as most programs are members. 
Um, if not, I highly encourage you to become one because our regular rate is just under $3,000. So it's a heck of a deal. Our membership rates are very inexpensive, makes it totally worth it. There's another question, Sarah, that says, can we enroll ourselves of or course. can only the agency do it? Knowledge is power. So you can enroll yourself in this course and use it on your road to wanting to be, to determine if family services is the career you're headed towards. You do not have to be part of a Head Start, early Head Start program to enroll in this course. Okay, we've got a question. If the program um, has not allocated training dollars to family service, is there anything that you would recommend that these family service workers would say or do um, in order to advocate for those training dollars to be allocated to education? That is a great question. Or to family service, excuse me. That is a great question. Thank you for whoever asked that. So when you start planning your TTA, um, which is, should be coming up, now for 23-24 school year, you want to put into your TTA plan or training plan, I don't, what other you guys call it in your programs, um, the need for family services for continued professional development. Now, if you have new staff, um, it is required. So you want to think about who is new on your team, who is going to have to take that credential, and allocate that few thousand dollars and put it into your plan so that they can get signed up, okay? Um, advocating for the family services staff outside of the performance standard, um, I would suggest that if we follow the, the PFCE framework um, from ECLEC, um, I like to go by colors. And the blue is family outcomes. And I'm very, um, it is very important that in order for blue to be strong and for purple to be strong, right, which is child outcomes, the blue has to be really strong. And that is increasing the capacity of our staff. So for quality family services to happen across the board, we need to have trained staff. And we want that blue, um, that family outcomes to be strong. So if you're not sure how to write it in your plan, let me know. <laughs> you have several questions, Sarah, about how this certification compares to other options that are out there. Sure. Can you speak to that? Yeah. So um, I'm familiar with a couple. Um, I can tell you that they're all set up in a different way, okay? UConn has a family development credential that is mandatory 80 hours of class time, 10 hours of portfolio time, and then there's a test, okay? NHSA is just a portfolio, it's pass or fail, there's no test, there's no class time, it's all online, okay? Um, UConn, uh, there's also, I believe those, I'm not sure, I'm not familiar with any other ones. You can see if any other specific ones were called out. Uh, answers yeah. for families, does that sound familiar? Can you repeat that, Rachel? Answers for families? I am not familiar um, with that one. I did see a question pop up from FSW Maria about having such a high turnover. I would really like to answer that question. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes, I, without getting a little bit too deep, um, I'm, where are you from, Maria? What state? Well, maybe while we give Maria a moment Indiana. Um, to connect with you. Okay. okay. So, so Maria, it depends, you know, there's turnover in family services, but what I find is that's the sole reason why you do not offer them the family services credential 
until at least they're seven, eight, nine months in, because then they're going to know whether or not that is something they would like to pursue. If you start them on the credential at nine months and they finish, you add the four months, they finish at 13 months, it's still in plenty of time um, to meet that requirement for employment. I also find that going a little bit deeper without extending it, typically high turnover from my experience is typically from um, employees not understanding family services and what they were going, what they were getting into when they took, they accepted the position and high caseloads. So just something to think about, but I definitely encourage your program and all of you on here not to even encourage anyone to take it until they have at least six or seven months under their belt. Does that make sense? I see Cynthia Fryman. Does that make sense, Cynthia? Awesome. Peggy, my girl in the purple, does that make sense? Okay. Next question. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the time commitment. How much sure. should they be budgeting a week? <laughs> well, we all work full time. And I suggest if you stay on pace, two to three hours a week is sufficient. As you get going, you're going to, you can skip around. You don't have to stay in the same order of all the questions, but you're going to get in a pace and kind of see, okay, I got this. I can do a little bit on Saturday morning. I can do a little bit on Monday. Um, I can tell you that most learners do not have a problem with finishing the portfolio in four months. It is a sufficient amount of time. So I, I know you're going to dip into this a little bit in our, our second half, Sarah, but this might be a good segue question. How involved should my supervisor be? Well, I am a supervisor and speaking <laughs> on behalf of all supervisors, I hope. Um, I choose to be really involved because I take a lot of pride in our program and what we offer to children and families. So when I am mentoring a staff member, I want them, number one, to understand what the questions are and to feel supported. But I also am involved because I want to make sure that as a program, we are on the right track. I consider the credential a little mini audit for our program. If they're asking us a question and I have no idea what it, they're asking, that's a little hint for me to write that down and say, we probably need to go back and figure this out as a program. But, but depending on how your agency is structured is the support you're going to get. So I'm very involved with my team. So I want to be part of the process every step of the way. Um, but I also have coordinators who are like the middlemen who help um, my learners with the meet. And then I pretty much swoop in in the beginning and in the middle and in the end, right before they submit it. Okay, I think we can um, pause the questions just for a second. Sure. Um, Valerie is here. Do you want to transition to... Yeah. Our second part. Hi, Valerie. You can unmute, dear. I thought I had unmuted. Hi. Hi, Valerie. So Valerie, um, I'd like to introduce you to Valerie. She is one of our learners that just passed with a very amazing high score. She did a wonderful, wonderful job. And we wanted her here so that you could hear from someone who just finished the portfolio um, what it was like. And um, Valerie, there's a lot of great questions and a lot of people just wondering what, um, what the Family Services Certification is all about. Can you just tell our friends on the Zoom um, how you felt when you first got started and how that changed as you continued? 
Um, at first it was like Mount Everest. I thought, oh my God, this is, this is a lot. So um, I learned that procrastinating is not the best thing. That was one of my first lessons. So that's something that um, I think um, as you look at the questions, as you become familiar with it, it makes you feel more comfortable. So that was uh, something that was very important for me. Organization was super, super important. Um, I think that helped me to be able to break it down into like bite sizes. So I created a folder and I created a Word document with each of the questions that helped me. Um, as Sarah said, the office hours were super, super helpful. Um, you can learn from other people's questions. So even if you don't really want to ask a question because you're shy, you'll still learn. Um, and mentoring, seeking help was really important. So I, um, I ask questions. Don't be shy to ask anybody, you know, a question. If it's about ERSI, maybe look for somebody that can help you with that or a social worker. Um, the credential was really helpful to me. Um, it helped me do my job with more confidence now because now I know um, based on what I learned, how to do my job better. So it, it was great. Even though at first I was like a little intimidated, but at the end it was a great experience and I highly suggest it for everyone. Awesome. Thanks, Valerie. Um, so what are some things that you remember as like the challenging questions? Do you remember any? Yeah, for me, one of the challenging areas was the program governess. Coming from like COVID time that we didn't have exposure. We did a lot of stuff on Zoom. I didn't have a lot of experience or exposure to the governess or to the RC. Some of those questions really were challenging for me. So if you are able to participate in any of those meetings in your groups, I think that's a great um, way to become familiar and be able to answer those questions. Because after the fact, I was able to go to one of our policy council meetings and it was super interesting. And when I was there, then I knew exactly I was able to connect. So the pro the program governance, um, RC questions, those were the ones that were very challenging. Um, and there'll be questions where maybe you still haven't had that experience. Like there's a question on child abuse. Maybe you haven't experienced that yet, but you can answer the questions based on um, what you would do in that particular situation. So um, there's videos that they give us mandatory videos on child abuse. I was able to gather from there and then answer those questions. So those were like the more challenging ones. Awesome, thanks Valerie. I also have Yaira Martinez on the line. She is a learner that just finished a couple months ago as well. Hi Yaira. You can unmute. Hi Anna. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Is there anything that you wanted to add to Valerie of how you felt when you finished the portfolio versus when, when you started? Yeah, as Valerie said, is um, for me was great too, because you can you can compare the knowledge that you have when you start and when you finish it, it's like you get to know a lot a lot in detailing and and you can talk about the program like make with the you can be sure that what you're talking about it's not like wondering or you know like not being sure so from what i hear you saying when you were finished with this certification you were more confident with yeah, families really confident. and children mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Anything else, if any advice for anybody, Valerie or Yaira, who are wondering whether or not they should do it? Should they do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're muted, Valerie. It's really helpful. Oh, you can't get unmuted? There yes, you go. I think, I think it's a very positive experience and I think that um, it will empower you to do your job a lot better. So I highly recommend it. 
do you think that you would have been able to complete this the first month of the on your job on the job? Absolutely not. No. You need to have about six months to a year in, would you think? Yes. Okay. From because a lot of the questions are based on your experience situations that you deal with on a daily basis with your family. So if you do it right from the beginning, you won't really have anything to draw from. So waiting a little while is a lot better. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. So, um, I have another question for you, Yaira or Valerie, or both of you. Um, it's been a long time since both of you were asked to do a class. How did you feel about writing the narratives, the essays, the paragraphs? How did you feel? Was it difficult? Did you get your groove on um, as you started? Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, great, thanks. Um, say the question again. How did you feel about your answers, like having to write in a paragraph form? Um, writing in the paragraph form wasn't um, that difficult, but um, I would always, I used a lot of I, I in my paragraphs. I did this, I did that. This is how I would. So like in first person because that's how I was told I needed to do it. So from experience and in an I form, like an example of how I handled a particular situation. So that's how I did my narrative, my essays, um, based on my experience and how I would handle something. And I use the word I a lot. Thank and, you. Oh, and I wanted to add one other thing. Sometimes the questions, um, and this was advice that I was given to by my supervisor. She said, if a question seems a little bit much, because sometimes the questions have a part A and a B and a C, you just put some bullet points on it first. Like you read it and you just throw some ideas on that on, and then you come back later and you create your paragraph. But you do some bullet points, come up with some ideas, some thoughts that you have, and then later on you can come back and that's how you break it down into little bite sizes and it's easier to do and proofreading always. <laughs> yeah. So some have that, thank you, Valerie. And thank you, Yaira. Some have asked as part of the grading, are we grading the grammar and the spelling? So what we wanna see is really good quality work and we have technology through Word um, to check spelling and to check grammar. A little bit here and there, of course not. But if I see a pattern where you didn't take the time to really check sentence structure and make sure it flowed, then you know you will lose some points. But otherwise, you know, just do your best. I understand that everyone's adult learners. Yeah, you're up. Go ahead. Yes, in my experience, because I'm Spanish speaking, and you know, and I'm not that perfect in English. What I used was the translation and I always answer my question in my language, my first language and use the translator. So, and in that point, because when my supervisor checked my answer, sometimes there was something in here, something in there, like maybe a preposition or, or little thing because it's different the way that we speak in Spanish and never the translation is perfect, but it's not like a, you know, like a big mess it was like just some little thing, but for me it was so helpful. Okay. Because that's the better way for me to answer in my own language. Thank you so much. You're How welcome. are we doing on questions, Rachel? list of them. Do you want me to just start going through? Sure. Um, can we pause for a minute so I can introduce everyone to Danita? Absolutely. Good plan. Thank you, Valerie, and thank you, Yaira. I'd like to take um, just 10 seconds and introduce 
to my NHSA um, reviewer buddy, Miss Danita. She is here with us um, and she's been filtering out some questions in the chat. Danita, do you wanna say hi to all of our friends across the country? I was gonna say, I can't unmute. <laughs> But um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I've been trying to respond to most of your questions in the um, chat. I may have missed a few. Hopefully I got to um, most of them. Um, a lot of them are asking about the different types of um, programs and I'm not sure if that was addressed early on and I apologize for coming in a little late. But I'm not sure about some of the courses that were mentioned but I did inform a few that um, if it's not a credential course, then it's not the um, same. This course will meet the, the regulations of the Office of Head Start that's um, in the performance standard stating that family services staff have to be credentialed. So I can't really speak on anything else, but this course gives you that um, credential that you'll be able to meet that regulation. But again, welcome everyone. Um, I'm here to support Sarah. If you if you have any other questions, of course, just put them in the chat and I'll try to respond to most of them. Go Thank through you. these um, also out loud real quick, just for those who end up watching the recording and um, may not have access to everything we put in the chat. So if there was a question about um, the supervisor sign off, um, if they have to do that just after the first module or after each one. It's, I think it's the first and then at the end, but it's best if your supervisor is involved throughout the process, but they don't have to sign out after sign off after each module. At the end they do, but it's best that they're involved throughout the process of you going through the, um, the modules, but they don't have to sign off on them. And why that's really important to have your supervisor, mentor, manager involved in this process because the first three or four questions, you want them to see it to make sure you're on the right track, okay? Um, and to make sure that they can see also um, the work that's going into this. It, it takes time. So get them involved from the very beginning for sure. There was another question about teacher certifications. If they have one, how does that play into this? That is a great question. I'm assuming, do you mean if you're a teacher with a license or a certification and you move to family services um, and you're out of the classroom, if you choose to move into family services, it's going to be based on what your program requirements are. Now, a lot of people can teach out of field without having a degree in education. So if there is a teacher in the classroom with a degree in social work, then they would meet that requirement and not have to take the credential. But it all depends on your agency and how they choose to determine um, who takes that or not. In general, anyone can take the course, of course, you know, the course, of course. Uh, but um, for teachers, it really depends on what you currently have. Mm -hmm. One more time, Danita. What's the duration of this course? Um, the duration usually is, uh, I think, four months. That is great. So we'll start I you. just want to be clear that there's no classes. All it is is logging in online, and it's self-paced. So you're researching it yourself looking for the responses yourself with your support staff and team. There's, there's a question no test. about There's a question about whether there is a, an additional cost for Canvas, whether you need to subscribe, and I can answer that one. That answer is no. You will be given a login as part of this course into Canvas. There's no additional costs there. Um, there's a question about whether it is offered in Spanish or if learners can answer in Spanish. So the course is not answered in Spanish. And um, I and Danita do not read in Spanish, but I would like to suggest um, that if you are the most comfortable responding in Spanish, my suggestion is to write it in Spanish, exactly like Yayira had suggested, 
and then working with someone or a translation system and translating it into English and then working with your peers and reading it out loud and just working through it so you feel comfortable with what you're submitting. You're welcome, Alicia. Um, there's a, a longer question here. Are there questions that are answered over the course? Would it be the same as accredited course? I'm not entirely sure if I understand that question. So if that's yours, maybe we you can ask to come off mute and explain so we can answer that appropriately. Uh, and um, also have been with Head Start for three years, moved from management into family service. Is that enough time to take the course? Oh, sure. Yes. So I was just, uh, just responding to that one. <laughs> you got that one. <laughs> I'm going to need help with this one too. Is there a chance for the participants to practice doing FPAs? That is a great question. So in FPA, everyone uses a different acronym. It's a family partnership agreement. And every program um, conducts and trains their team differently on family partnership agreements. But there is training modules on ECLEC. Okay, so please look and see what you're needing. And there's a lot of training on ECLEC, but right now through this course, we do not specifically train on that. But just a little hint, when you are speaking with families and conducting a family partnership agreement, you wanna use a shared approach where you are in partnership together, trying to meet their needs, okay? Um, there are some questions about payments and registration processes, and I would say if you have questions along those lines, um, because they're going to be very specific, if you want to do something other than use a PO or a credit card to pay up front, please contact me and let's see what we can do. Um, the registration process is pretty straightforward. You'll go in and just follow a series of, of checkout buttons from our website. If you run into any problems with that, again, feel free to contact me or our help desk academy at nhsa.org. We're happy to walk you through that process. Um, I'd like to address, I think it's Lydia. Lydia, she's asking if um, this course is similar to the family engagement course. As I mentioned, I'm not sure what the family engagement course is that you took. But again, this is the credentialed course that meets the um, Head Start requirement of being credentialed as a family services um, advocate, worker, what have you. So I'm not sure what the family engagement course that you're referencing. I don't know if you, you got wanna, a credential. Um, give us more details in the chat. We can definitely see. If you're talking about the family engagement course we have here at NHSA, they are significantly different. Family Engagement okay. Basics is all about helping everyone in a program to engage with families in a positive manner. And this course is really diving deep into how to do family service. Um, Sarah, one more question about how often we offer this. Sure, so if it's monthly. So if you were to sign up now, then you most likely would get your login credentials for the beginning of March. And that's when the clock starts ticking four months from when you get your credential, your, your login credentials. OK, so you have four months to take it. And it's definitely a sufficient amount of time if you stay on pace. Here's one for you. If somebody worked in family services prior to 2016, left and came back, are they required to take this course? That's a great question. It actually depends on your agency and um, if they're gonna choose to grandfather you in or if they're going to ask you to take the course. For example, in my program where we're under a school board, I would we would require them to take it depending on you know, if they had a degree or not, but most likely we would require them to take it. So there's a question from um, someone who says, I worked 
I work for a childcare center that just became part of early head start for some of the classrooms. And this person got promoted to become the new family support specialist and work with early head start. Do you recommend this person takes this yes. course? Yes. So this course really is going to be beneficial. It's really beneficial for everyone. There are, you know, specifically in family services, early head start. You know, in early head start, we set goals, we do the FTA, we do needs assessments, we do applications and enrollment, we recruit for policy council, we link um, families to community resources. So this this course is perfect for that person. Um, there was a question about the office hours, if you could just reiterate how those work. <clears throat> sure. So it is the first and third Mondays of the month at, at five o'clock Eastern time on Zoom. Once you sign up for the course, you get link, you get, you'll get the Zoom link. The first one is mandatory, but every other one is optional. But when you hop on to office hours, we have good discussions about questions and we kind of help and guide you um, like, hey, you need to look in this procedure or you need to talk to your manager about this. Um, so we have a good time on office hours. It's, it seems to be really helpful. Yaira or Valerie, if you want to unmute, would you like to share with the group how you think about office hours? I don't think they can unmute. Right. Um, I found office hours to be great. Um, sometimes I didn't have to ask questions. Some of us are shy. So other people ask questions and I would take notes and they would even give examples. So I think it's very helpful and I encourage everybody to, to take advantage of them because it really helps. Awesome. Thank you, Valerie. Welcome. So before we start wrapping it up, um, I would love to hear in the chat your thoughts about um, this webinar. Um, zero is least helpful and five is most helpful. So we're going to do a fist to five. So anywhere in the chat, was it five really helpful, four mostly helpful, and three, and then two, and then I hope we don't see any zeros or ones, but hey, it always helps us improve. Lots of fives. Awesome. Thank you so much. You got a Four 10, five. Sarah. You did great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, everyone. The video will be posted. Yes. So as we're ramping up, um, we are going to be sending everybody an email, um, and that will have the links to the video of today's presentation. So if you have somebody else who wasn't here that you want to see that, that will be available. We'll have a PDF of the slides. Um, sometimes that's helpful to have just as a quick reference. Um, you're welcome to contact me with any other questions that you have. And uh, we really hope to see all of your staff go through this certification and benefit from the incredible learning experience that it is. Sarah and Danita do an amazing job taking people through this and they come out feeling so empowered. So. Um, if there's anything else we can do to empower you, let us know. Sarah, any final thoughts? No, just don't be scared. You can do it. We're here to help. And learning, you know, we're if you're a lifelong learner, like we encourage our families to be, then you can do it. Great final thought. Sure. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. Have everyone. a great day.